is falling, but the port of Bali is busy. Most people know Bali as a holiday destination. Many traditional handicrafts have become popular with tourists. So artisans have flocked to Bali to meet the demand. Su Yan Cho is one of them. He is a pattern designer at a handmade batik factory. He personally dyes the cloth by hand and is the factory's most experienced artisan. His monthly salary is only around 170 US dollars, so he makes some simple batik pieces after work to increase his income. His wife and daughter are his assistants, applying the wax before dyeing the cloth. The livelihood of 80% of the Balinese people is related to tourism. Su Yanto's son hopes to find a job in the tourism industry after he graduates from college so he can help sell his father's products. He believes his father's batik pieces are fantastic. Batik is a local handicraft product that includes decorative cloth and clothing. It originated on the island of Java and is considered to be a national treasure. The pattern is first painted on cotton with liquid wax using a special tool. After dyeing and removing the wax, the cloth becomes an exquisite work of art. The process is like a holy ritual. The islands of Indonesia are separated by the sea, so each island has its own style of batik. There are many opinions concerning its origin. Some believe it originated in India or Sri Lanka, while others believe it was born here in Indonesia. Friday is Batik Day in Indonesia, when government and corporate personnel all wear batik clothes. In fact, batik has replaced the suit and tie as formal wear for important occasions. Batik has become part of the people's sense of national identity. Drawing patterns on the cloth is creative work that relies entirely on feeling and experience. Sometimes Su Yan To lacks fresh ideas, so he goes to the seashore for a walk for inspiration. When the sun is directly overhead, water evaporates quickly. This is the best time to dye cloth. Suyanto rinses the cloth painted with liquid wax, then soaks it in the dye. He adds a special substance to fix the color. Then he boils the cloth to get rid of the wax and lets it air dry. The parts covered with wax remain white while the other parts absorb the dye. 
The process is then repeated to add different colors. It takes a week to several months to complete a one by two meter piece of batik. The next morning, Su Yanto takes the batik pieces he has made this month to the batik shop, which is frequented by tourists. Su Yanto's latest batik pieces fetch a good price and sell out quickly. Although he only receives a small percentage of the sale prices of his work, Su Yanto believes his work is very valuable and that he is the best batik maker in Indonesia. In Bandung, Indonesia's third largest city, which is 1,200 kilometers from Bali, Batik designs are more fashionable and cutting edge. Textiles and clothing have always been major Indonesian exports, with a total export volume of nearly 8 billion US dollars, the 10th highest in the world. Changes came to the traditional clothing industry beginning in 2002, with greater emphasis on design. Twenty-year-old Tet Et Kayati is a young designer. The dresses she designs have become very popular among younger Indonesians. She's now busy preparing for an upcoming fashion show. Kayati became a dress designer because of her mother, Salum Maui. Salum is a well-known oil painting artist in Bandung. She's made some innovative changes to traditional batik patterns and designs new patterns, which are modern and vibrant. She helps her daughter make clothes from this fashionable material. Kayati has also branched out to include batik handbags, high-heeled shoes, and accessories. She'll be presenting her designs from the last two years at the fashion show. Bandung, the third largest city in Indonesia, is known as Paris in Java. The local modern art adds new elements to batik. Kayati comes here today to see her brother, a photographer, about making a poster for the fashion show. It remains to be seen whether her designs will be popular or not. The real test will be consumer reaction. This fashion show is a tribute for young designers to this traditional art form. Ayati and her mother endeavor to demonstrate to the world the charm of traditional batik integrated with modern art. Over 80% of Indonesians are Muslims. The people of Bali, however, are mainly Hindu. The 
The Balinese people create beauty every day. Before the island became popular with tourists, they didn't have a well-developed concept of art. In fact, every religious building and article is a work of art. The Balinese people believe in animism. When Bali became a popular tourist destination, everyday items became tourist souvenirs, making Obud a world-famous artist colony. Kitat Labelle is one of the eight veteran artists at the village's wood carving gallery. His father was also a wood carver who made statues of gods and other figures for temples. In addition to making temple statues, Labelle creates exquisite and expensive tourist souvenirs. Only a small number of veteran artists still use traditional wood carving techniques. But Labelle continues to use techniques passed down for generations. He and his whole family are dedicated to preserving the old carving skills. Traditionally, carvings are based on legendary figures and stories from the two great Hindu epics, Ramayana and Mahabharata. Historical records indicate that traditional wood carving is related to the sea voyages of Zheng He, a renowned Chinese voyager in the Ming Dynasty, because he brought artists to Indonesia. Bell is a devout Hindu who prays in his family shrine at dawn. Flowers are used as sacrificial offerings. The Balinese are very serious about their religion. They would rather spend their money on grand family shrines than food and clothing. La Belle diligently prays for the safety and happiness of his family. Most wood carvings are made of hardwood, such as ebony or teak. Labelle never uses a sketch or guide when he carves. He depends on his eyes and experience alone to ensure success. He takes his time and doesn't rush into it until he has a good inspiration. When inspiration comes, he immediately acts on it. Although he is confident, he remains cautious because one mistake can easily ruin the whole piece. Life in Indonesia is slow-paced. Life in Bali Island is laid back, and the people can always find a reason to relax. In his spare time, Labelle enjoys cockfighting, which is a common pastime among Balinese men. Local people believe chicken blood purifies the land and appeases the gods, so cockfights usually take place in front of a temple. In 
Bali, the cock symbolizes heroism and the warrior spirit. Cockfighting is a symbol of honor and dignity, as well as a pastime. Wood carving is nearing completion. The whole family, including his three year old grandson, helps him with the finishing touches. LaBelle has two daughters, but neither wants to continue his craft, and traditional wood carving is dying out. LaBelle worries that his skills may be lost, so he's hoping his grandson will follow in his shoes. Bali and Java are the most open islands in Indonesia. The ancestors of the Javanese people can be traced back 1.7 million years. Java, at the core of Indonesia, is home to three major ethnic groups. The Java ethnic group is the largest, followed by the Sundanese and the Madurese. Wid Yanningsi is a 14-year-old Sundanese girl in middle school. Like other students, Wid Yanningsi attends school in the morning and studies folk dancing in a Sundanese troupe in the afternoon. Creative Sundanese people love music and can produce beautiful music using almost anything. The angklung is made of abundant local bamboo and produces sound through the vibration of bamboo tubes. A thousand or more players may participate in performances. The song and dance troupe gives commercial performances to obtain funding so they can teach Sundanese youngsters, like Wid Yanningsi, traditional music and dance. The young performers put on their own makeup before the performance. The scholarship Wid Yanningsi obtained from the troupe allows her to pursue her interest and help reduce her family's expenses as well. What the show begins with is the Angklung performance. Backstage, with Yanning Si and the other young performers are having a final rehearsal.
It's finally her turn to go on stage, where she performs a dance based on a Sundanese folk legend, which tells the story of a group of girls who fight and defeat enemies to protect their land, similar to the Chinese story of Mulan. There is a stage big enough for any dream. In fact, Indonesia itself is like a giant work of art. Its colorful and inclusive character leaves a deep impression on all who visit. Eighty percent of the Indonesian population believe in Islam. New lifestyles have integrated with foreign cultures here. Today, this rapidly developing Asian country is becoming more and more confident and inclusive. Please join us for part four of Glamorous Indonesia. Glamorous Indonesia.